The movie starts with showing us a glimpse from 25 years ago, when Catherine is a little girl living with her loving parents. She idealizes her dad, who is a firefighter, and wants someone to marry like him to have her happily ever after. It is 2008 now. Catherine is working in public relations department at a hospital. She is a married woman now, and it isn't surprising that the man she has a love marriage with is also a firefighter like her dad. Catherine is still close to her parents, whom she visits every week, especially to take care of her ailing mother. Her mother had a stroke, and now she can't move or talk. Catherine misses her mother, as she is unable to talk to her like before. Her mother needs a new bed and a wheelchair, which isn't affordable, that worries Catherine a lot. Catherine is doing successfully at her work, just like Captain Caleb is as well. He is dedicated at what he does, saving people from burning buildings and knocked over cars. He is a hero at his work, putting his life at stake to save other people's lives. He has built a fun and friendly bond with colleagues at his workplace. He trains new recruits, and we get to know how he preaches, never to leave your partner in fire. He lives by this code at his work only, at home in his married life, he is letting the fire consume all. It was a love marriage, and has remained a good one for a decade or so, until now. Apparently, both are doing whatever that is needed to do, as obligation. Catherine pays bills, does grocery, does laundry, and takes care of the house they live in. Caleb pays the mortgage of the house, and bears both of their car's expenses. Catherine complains of him not having enough communication with her, and spending too much of his time on watching lewd shows on internet. She wants him to spend on fixing the house, rather than saving for a boat that isn't required even. He calls her disrespectful and ungrateful. It is loosely indicated that they don't get intimate anymore. She doesn't feel hurt, and he doesn't feel appreciated. There is bickering back and forth, and blame game whenever they get to talk even on something simple. Caleb loses his cool after such quarrels, and takes it out on garbage cans, where he always finds his neighbor, Mr. Rudolph, witnessing him doing so. It has a funny touch to it. Caleb trusts Lieutenant Michael, his workmate, to confide in him about his married life issues. Michael suggests Caleb to go for counseling. Caleb finds the idea illogical. Michael presses, saying he just needs to know how to make it work, before assuming it is a broken marriage. Michael is a man of faith and appears to have a very happy marriage, but has experienced rough patches before. Caleb doesn't look convinced with idea of counseling, but Michael pointing out how Caleb putting in some effort can mend things, had Caleb pause for a moment there. One night a fight between them, makes Catherine say she wants to be out of this marriage. She tosses her wedding band away into her closet. She vents out to his friends, who seconds her decision to leave this marriage. They fortify her perception, that no matter how much of a hero her husband may be as a firefighter, he isn't a real hero for not loving his wife. We get to see a bit of contrast between the company Catherine has, and the company Caleb has. Catherine's female friends agree to her on it being a bad marriage, and a good plan to end it. On the other side, Caleb has got Michael, who questions his thoughts, and doesn't agree to whatever negative thinks of his marriage. There is an excellent part of cross-cutting to juxtapose complaints of both partners. Catherine among her friends, and Caleb in talk with Michael. Both think the other one isn't showing respect. Catherine is of the opinion that their marriage never been okay, while Caleb finds it being totally okay until lately. She thinks he is insensitive. He thinks she is more sensitive than needed. She says he doesn't listen even, and she has to say it over and over, just to make him listen and understand. He thinks she nags him all the time. Both think they are incompatible, and going insane and holding this marriage together. Amid the chaos in his marriage, Caleb continues to save people's lives at his job. One day out of his dangerous routine is shown. Some teenagers race their cars, and get off the road by accident, and get trapped in rail tracks. Caleb with his team rushes to the spot of accident. One of the cars has a wounded girl in it, who was alive but entrapped. It gets impossible to stop the train heading towards them on rail track. Caleb holds the hand of the wounded girl, and calms her down. The whole team and passersby try together to lift the car off the rail track manually. They were on the clock, as the train was just inches away from running them over. They manage to lift the car to safety, and escapes death by an inch. Michael is shown distraught, and thanking God for saving him from death. Afterwards, we get to see an exchange between Caleb and a workmate, about hell and heaven. It appears that despite not being very fond of religion and God, Caleb does have a soft corner for spirituality. Caleb chooses to discuss about him and Catherine going for divorce with his father, Mr. Holt. His father brings along Caleb's mother, Cheryl. Apparently, Caleb doesn't like his mother much. He starts off with telling how he and Catherine always have had arguments, but now everything has flared up to the point of divorce. Cheryl feels Catherine needs him to help her at home, as she can't handle everything herself. Caleb doesn't feel he needs to help with daily chores, he is already doing enough work at fire station. He is certain of Catherine being the one who needs to correct herself to have this relationship work. He argues that Cheryl is siding with Catherine unfairly. Caleb asks his father to have this talk alone, without having his mother there. Caleb and Mr. Holt go out for a walk, along a trail that holds an important place in the story. The trail leads to a clear patch, with a wooden cross and tree stump. 
His father tells him how his own marriage had been at the same point as Caleb's, and could have ended if God hadn't saved it. It appears that Caleb holds his mother as the culprit, who has finally come around and is treating her husband better. On hearing his dad giving credit to God for saving his marriage, Caleb is anything but interested. He used to believe in God, but the idea that God is concerned for his and Catherine's marital issues is absurd to him. On the contrary, Mr. Holt seems to have reverted to God and spirituality, after a long time of not caring about any of it. He wants Caleb to put God in equation, and try to save his marriage through religion. Caleb is unmoved and insists to remain so. Caleb's dad asks him to hold off the divorce for 40 days, and try an experiment called the Love Dare, to save his marriage. Caleb resists the idea, but his father insists that this challenge has saved his marriage, and he is sure that it will save Caleb's. He asks Caleb to consider it as a gift from his father, and follow it for that reason if not any. Caleb agrees. Deprived of praises and attention, Catherine has started letting in someone from work. It is Dr. Gavin Keller at hospital, who apparently fancies Catherine. He compliments her, calls her amazing and shares table for lunch with her. It appears, at this point, as if the scenario of an already failing marriage is going to get messier. Caleb tells Michael about the experiment he is going to try. He plans not to let Catherine get wind of it. Michael, on seeing Caleb being indifferent towards possibility of getting divorced, tries to make him understand that a marriage is more than what he thinks it is. It is a covenant, made for lifetime. How this covenant demands to accept your partner on seeing the bad in them, and how this isn't about being together only when time is good. Michael goes as far as gluing salt and pepper shakers together to make his point, that how spouses need to stick together in sunny days or in rains. Breaking the glued shakers apart will end up damaging one or both, similarly divorce will not bring the right kind of peace. The entire philosophy of marriage, and this movie for that matter, is there in this very scene, where Michael tells a successful marriage isn't about it never going through rough times, but how both partners take those tough times in stride, making it a fireproof marriage. Caleb ends this conversation on being adamant that it isn't his fault that their marriage is going to end, and it isn't his responsibility to fix it. Michael is bewildered that Caleb is just going to sit there and let his house be burnt down to ashes, the very Caleb who saves people from burning houses every other day. Caleb receives mail from his dad as per promise. It has a notebook entailing all the instructions for 40 days experiment called the Love Dare. Caleb must carry out a specific task each day for 40 days straight. Each task written on the notebook has a supporting and motivating verse from Bible with it. According to Mr. Holt, it will not only save Caleb's marriage, but will also change his life for better. He was clear in warning beforehand that this challenge can get very difficult and needs a lot of perseverance. Day one of the experiment asks Caleb to hold himself from saying anything that is negative to his wife. So, Caleb keeps his cool and stays silent, despite fuming inside when Catherine refuses his request to take his clothes to dry cleaning. Day 2 has Caleb showing some unexpected kind gesture, with no expectation of reward. He brews coffee for her one morning, which she refuses completely. He disappointed and angry, dumps the coffee down the sink. Abiding by what Day 3 demands, Caleb needs to invest money, time, and energy in coming up with something, to show his wife he cares. He orders some flowers and a box of chocolates for her. Catherine finds this cute present on table, but doesn't seem to be pleased by any of it. While Caleb is working on experiment to put his married life together, he is having fun time at workplace with his team and trainees. They play rookie prank with Eric, a new trainee, to fetch a hose stretcher. Then there are comical scenes of Terrell with Wayne, another newbie. Wayne brags how he is now capable enough to handle difficult situations. Caleb asks him to beat him in taking lesser time to gulp down the entire bottle of hot chili sauce. Caleb does it in 23 seconds. Wayne runs away with his mouth on fire after 14 seconds of doing it. He is pissed off after learning that Caleb had his sauce replaced with tomato juice. There is a paradox between the light-hearted environment he and his team keep at fire station, and the life-risking work they do in field. Also, there is a fun-loving side of Caleb, that comes to play when he is with his workmates. It is day four now. Caleb follows the experiment, and gives a call to Catherine, in mid of the day at work to check on her. He asks her how she's doing, and if she needs anything. This amazes and confuses Catherine at the same time. She shares this with her friends at work, who take no time in suggesting that Caleb is playing all sweet, just to get away with more than his share in divorce settlement. With such suspicions about Caleb, Catherine comes home to find him at his computer, deleting history of his web search. She calls him out for his addiction to watching lewd stuff on internet. He doesn't argue back, as this is something he admits. She goes on to tell how he can't trick her with his tactics, to take more than what he deserves in divorce settlement. Caleb feels humiliated for being misjudged. Catherine goes on telling him how much repulsive his addiction to lewdness is to her. This argument infuriates him, and he hits the trash can again, while Mr. Rudolph stands there. Catherine is crying her heart out to her mute mother. She expresses how insulted she feels because of Caleb watching profane stuff on internet. 
She feels as if she isn't enough for him anymore. Feeling too discouraged to continue the love dare, Caleb gives a call to his dad, to tell how the experiment doesn't seem to seal the cracks. Mr. Holt advises him to be more patient and sincere in his efforts, as it is obvious, he is doing it for the sake of doing it. He needs to do it with heart and dedication. Encouraged and directed, Caleb is willing to resume the experiment. But at this junction, Catherine is becoming closer to Dr. Keller. They chat a lot more now at work. He woos her with a rose and a note. She feels happier and seems to enjoy this attention. She isn't going to be receptive of what Caleb may do for her, as there is someone else here now to fill the void. For day 18, Caleb is going to arrange a candlelight dinner for Catherine and get to know her more. The notebook says it is to study your wife, which needs to continue even after wedding. It ought not to stop. Caleb goes further to order good food, use nice crockery, play music on, and dress well on recommendation of Michael to make it a nice romantic date. Catherine doesn't embrace this even and tell him she doesn't love him. Broken and disappointed once again, Caleb calls his dad like always, who insists on seeing him. We see Catherine lying in bed and weeping to herself. Mr. Holt drives all the way to meet Caleb. He tells since it's day 20, it does gets hard at this point of experiment. It got hard for Mr. Holt as well, when Mr. Holt was trying this 40-day challenge for his marriage. Caleb says experiment bore good results for Mr. Holt's marriage, because there was hope for his case. It is not going to produce equally good results for Caleb's case, since Catherine has rejected all the gestures, and she doesn't love him anymore. Mr. Holt wants Caleb not to ignore the supporting biblical verses in Notebook, and he is in need of connection with Jesus, besides putting practical efforts. Caleb doesn't think Jesus can bring any good to him and his broken home. He goes on about how he is doing everything right, buying flowers, arranging dinner, washing dishes, but Catherine is still giving him cold shoulder, she's still being stubborn and ungrateful. Mr. Holt catches the point to make Caleb understand, that Caleb is doing same with God by rejecting him continuously. God sent Jesus to die for our sins, irrespective of whether we deserve it or not. Mr. Holt carries on telling, how he came to know true meaning of love, by knowing God's love for his children. To love is not to expect a reward, to love is to do it whether someone deserves it or not. He advises Caleb to pray to Lord, and ask for forgiveness, as he needs him more than ever now. Michael is happiest to learn that Caleb has reverted to faith. While they are rejoicing it, Caleb asks Michael how he manages his marriage with his wife, Tina, so well with such ease. Michael opens to Caleb for the first time about his first marriage, which failed because of his wrongdoings. He turned to God for help and mended his ways, but it was too late to mend his broken marriage. He then married Tina, and now with help of his newly found faith, he isn't repeating his past mistakes. He must be selfless and take control of his heart, to remain a devoted husband. Michael's words seem to influence Caleb. Michael has those salt and pepper shakers glued together in his hand, while he talks. On the other side, Catherine is worried about arranging a wheelchair and hospital bed for her ailing mother. She shows her worries to Dr. Keller and finding solace in his words and compliments. All he does is tell her how amazing and nice she is, something that Catherine feels in need of. We get to see another goosebumps raising day out of Caleb's work life. He and his team are called to a house on fire, with a little girl trapped inside. Caleb goes inside the burning house to find the girl lying unconscious on the floor. Unable to get out of the main door, as fire is catching on, he enters a room and tries to break its window to outside. He takes off his oxygen mask and puts it around the unconscious little girl. The window's opening isn't big enough. He calls out to direct his team's attention towards there, but no one can hear him. He cracks a hole in the wooden floor with his Pulaski and manages to go down into crawl space, dragging the girl along with him. The fire is spreading fast. He crawls all the way to the outside. His teammates pull out the girl and help him out. He sustains first-degree burns and is brought to the hospital Catherine works at. The doctor seeing him turns out to be Dr. Keller. We get to see an awkward encounter of three at hospital. Catherine chooses not to stay with Caleb and goes back to her work. Caleb picks his wedding band to put on his finger. Dr. Keller advises against it, to which Caleb says his hand needs to heal with this ring on. There is new determination and energy in Caleb now and that looks very positive. The town is praising the heroic deed of Caleb, but Catherine looks indifferent to this. He looks sad that Catherine fails to see any good in him. It is day 23 of the experiment. Caleb, after the last argument with Catherine, is already fighting the temptation to watch lewdness on internet. He is finding it the hardest thing to do on earth. Frustrated, he picks up the notebook and reads what day 23 task has for him. Coincidentally, it is about identifying parasites that suck life out of marriage, and one being an addiction to vulgarity. It clearly has dawned upon Caleb that he is investing his love, money, time, and attention in the wrong place. He, invigorated by these words, unplugs the computer set and break it into pieces in his backyard. Funnily enough, Mr. Rudolph is there standing awkwardly, witnessing him doing so. Catherine notices the computer table having flowers, and a note of I love you more in place of the computer. The more implying that she loves him too, a way of making her search for the love she has for him, buried inside of her. We see that this sincere gesture of Caleb has an effect on Catherine. She does seem moved by it. 
Caleb looks at peace when he wakes up the next morning, but he is all tears when he finds, to his surprise, the divorce letter placed by Catherine at dining table. Catherine is in a home care for her mother and learns that someone has paid for her mom's wheelchair and bed already. Assuming that it is Dr. Keller, who did such a generous act secretly, she thanks him and asks him out for lunch. Meanwhile Caleb finds an affectionate note on a card from Dr. Keller in Catherine's room. He goes to the hospital to confront Dr. Keller, for coming in between him and his wife. He intimidates Dr. Keller with a fist near his face, and asks him to stay away from Catherine. Dr. Keller does seem to understand Caleb's warning. After Caleb leaves, Dr. Keller takes out his wedding ring to put it on, but decides against it. We get to know Dr. Keller is married, but hides it from people. And he is not so much of a gentleman as Catherine considers him to be. Catherine is unaware of Caleb meeting Dr. Keller, so she is upset when Dr. Keller blows her off at lunchtime. She, in her melancholy, is sitting at lunch table alone. When a workmate, Anna joins her. Along the conversation, Anna is concerned about Catherine getting closer to Dr. Keller while she is married. Anna tries to counsel Catherine to stay watchful of what she is doing, and what kind of person Dr. Keller can be. Catherine feels her privacy being violated, so she leaves. We get to see how some people in our social circle can be blunt and honest in their advice for us like Anna, and how some just want to gossip about our problems like some other friends of Catherine. In following couple of days, we see Caleb praying for his marriage. He does dishes, takes out garbage, does the cleaning and stays composed. He continues doing great at his job, saving people. One day, Catherine gets sick. Caleb brings her medicine and tends to her. She can't help asking him what has brought such a difference in him. He tells her about the love dare and comes to know she knows about it already. He gets to his knees and asks for her forgiveness. He admits his faults. He says he knows how to love her now after connecting with God and how much he wants to grow old with her. Catherine weeps along with him. She asks for some time to process all this. One beautiful thing is, it is day 43 today. Experiment has been over three days ago. Caleb is still putting efforts in winning Catherine back. Catherine learns at home care that the secret benefactor who paid for her mother's wheelchair and bed was Caleb. Dr. Keller had contributed only a small amount, while the rest of the hefty amount was from Caleb. Catherine knows it was the money he was saving for his boat for years, and he sacrificed it for Catherine's mother without letting anyone know. She is in tears. She goes home and puts her wedding ring back on. She gets dressed up to meet Caleb at his fire station. Michael informs Caleb that Catherine is here to see him. Shocked and happy, Caleb looks at Catherine, who is dressed in a beautiful red dress, and is weeping while expressing her love for him. She tells him after a very long time that he is a good man. She wants to become what he has become. While they both share an intimate moment, Michael behind the door, sneaking on them is over the moon with joy. Caleb takes Catherine to that patch at the end of trail, with the cross and stumps. Mr. Rudolph now sees Caleb happily opening car's door for Catherine, instead of hitting the trash can. There is a happy gathering of Caleb and Catherine with Mr. and Mrs. Holt. Mr. Holt thinks now is the time to reveal to Caleb that it was Cheryl who tried the Love Dare experiment and saved their marriage. Caleb, who spent his life blaming his mother for being the bad one, is apologetic towards Cheryl and asks for her forgiveness. He and Cheryl hug each other. The ending has everyone gathered at the clear patch for Caleb and Catherine, who are renewing their wedding vows with conviction. They understand that marriage is a covenant for eternity, and they need to stick together in good and bad. It is a beautiful scene, where camera stops at what is placed on top of the wedding cake, the salt and pepper shakers glued together. 